Hi. Delay is one of the most common effects out there. And for good reason. It can take one sound and multiply it in a lot of interesting ways. And sometimes a lot more. So when a company like Eventide, known for its effects, comes out with its first Eurorack module, it's worth taking a look. EuroDDL is a hybrid digital analog delay module. Sound is recorded digitally, but many other elements like gain and the filter are analog. Now it has a few tricks up its sleeve, but let's start with the basics first. Delay simply samples a snippet of audio and plays it back to you at a predetermined millisecond or second interval, which also happens to be the sample or feedback loop length. The feedback knob controls the level of the audio next time it's played back to you, or effectively, how many times it's played back. As long as you're under 100, it will eventually fade out, and you can turn the knob all the way up to 110 in this case, to get wild feedback effects. And if you don't want that to happen, there's a setting to limit how high feedback can go. The delay time knob controls how long it takes for the sound you make to start looping back on itself. This can be anywhere from as low as 0.11 milliseconds, which creates chorus or flanger type effects and all the way up to ten seconds in the case of the highest quality audio setting which effectively turns this into a looper and as you can see modulating the delay creates interesting effects you can reduce the sample rate by hitting the multiply button which will immediately take it down from 192 kilohertz to 96 kilohertz and if you hold this button and turn this knob you can go all the way down to 12 kilohertz which basically gives you 160 seconds worth of sampling time at a nice lo-fi sampling rate i'll just increase the delay time so that you can hear it and then play three notes see and then if i increase the quality back up the higher rates repeat precisely. You can turn this knob to get a gradual change in delay time or press it in to get quick changes. And if the quick changes are too abrupt for you, you can activate glide, which then makes the quick changes sound like this. A different way to control this would be using control voltage. I've got maths over here. Uh, this accepts plus or minus five volts, so I'll use output number three into here. And now I can control the range using voltage. Now, by default, five volts goes up and down 100 milliseconds, but you can change that. Delay time will move up and down by this amount every time it receives voltage. The mix knob controls whether you hear just the source, dry source sound, a mix of the delay and the source, and a completely wet sound. The final control knob we have is the low pass filter cutoff frequency. This filter processes just the feedback loop and it's off by default, which means your delays are exact copies of the original sound subject to the sample rate we spoke about before. However, if we turn it on, and I'll increase the feedback, then every subsequent loop, depending on how low we set it, will be more and more muted, or just the low frequencies will pass. So those were the four basic control knobs. Let's take a look at what some of the buttons do. Tap delay is pretty obvious, and you can see a 
BPM counter as we adjust the tempo. If you hold it and turn the delay knob, you can set the tempo to a broad range of tempo multiples, triplets, dotted notes, and so on. Drive gives you an immediate 20 dB boost on the input. For distortion or especially low signals, Q lets you cut off new audio into the feedback loop. You'll still hear your dry and wet sounds, you just won't be able to add more audio into the feedback loop. And what Infinity does is just keep a loop going on forever until you release it. I'll take out my synth down here and plug in a different audio source. And once I get that going, I need to get my tempo right. And it'll be out of phase until I do. And I'm going for 126 BPM. And now I've set the delay loop to be one bar. And the minute I hit infinity, and now off camera, I'm reducing the level of my original drum loop. And now the only thing you're hearing is the Euro DDL. I'll move the mix knob all the way to the right to make it fully wet. And there you have it, a nice loop. So Euro DDL is also a looper. Okay, another nice feature is to reverse the feedback buffer. Now let's take a look at some more advanced effects. So if I take the delay buffer and shorten it all the way to around 20 milliseconds, for example, and then turn the delay knob, I can get nice chorus or flanger style effects. Now there's a setting that lets you change the CV mod range, and I'll do that now to make it 10 milliseconds. And that's gonna be my mod range. I'll take this LFO and use maths to attenuate it because it goes plus and minus 10 volts and I wanna go plus and minus five volts. And maths can also be an LFO. And I'll connect the output to the delay input. And the nice thing is you can immediately see how the LFO is changing the delay time. And as I increase it, it reflects really nicely on the display. Mod depth changes the effect. Let's try out a different audio source. For example, let's say your synth doesn't have pulse width modulation. So the Verbos harmonic oscillator doesn't have PWM, pulse width modulation, but we can sort of fake it like this. And of course, we could change the LFO speed if we wanted it to go faster. The return and send jacks on the top of the panel let you apply insert effects to the feedback loop, such as EQ or other effects. As an example, I'll use clouds to create a delayed harmony. I'll take whatever eventide is recording and send it into clouds, and then back out of clouds into the return jack. And I've set up clouds to take the input, pitch it up an octave, and return it back. And the effect that it will have will be to increase the octave of the feedback loop every time it goes around. And I can shorten that, of course. Really nice way to spice up your sound. So that is return and send effects. Okay, if you send the DDL short bursts of noise, you can try out a form of physical modeling called Carpless Strong. The idea is that by playing with a low pass filter and the delay time with extremely short delay times, you can get a nice string-like or percussive sound. If you've seen Blue Man Group play on plastic tubes, you can create that sound by sending a short burst of noise into a filtered short delay loop. Delay time determines pitch. 
You can use control voltage to play notes, but there's no volt per octave calibration here, so you need to do that on your own with an attenuverter. Perhaps that's something they could add in a future version. Aside from voltage control for the delay that I showed you before, you can also control the feedback levels, mix, low pass filter, and you can also modulate the multiply amount. You can set infinite loop kill or reverse to either trigger or work with an on off gate. You can sync tempo in with clock in or send tempo out using the clock out jack. So that's pretty much it for Eventide's Euro DDL, a Eurorack digital hybrid delay module that's straightforward and easy to use, but has a few tricks up its sleeve. Now I'll show you one more cool thing in a clip coming up soon, so hit subscribe and ring the little YouTube bell to be notified when that comes out. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section below. If you learned something, please hit the like button. Thanks for watching.